Curling Championship. With me is Amelia Hintz, a Wausau West grad, and right now she's on the junior team for the U.S. Team Junior Worlds, as they call it. I'm George Hirsch, and uh, I think this is year number six for me, and it's uh, something that I enjoy doing, and we're going to be going into the actual competition on the ice right now. It's the D.C. Everest girls against Lodi. Now, the champion, the defending champion for this competition was Poinette, and Lodi last won in 1991. Uh, Everest has yet to have a champion, so maybe this is the the big year for the DC Everest girls for a state championship. And uh, Amelia, we're going to ask you for more strategy and some of the terminology as we look down on the ice right now. All eight sh sheets are busy. There are 32 teams in this tournament, 16 boys and 16 girls, so they have eight sheets. We are on number four. And we pick it up right here. Looks like the score is one to zero going into the second end. Um, looks like Lodi is up as they're playing yellow. Now, one of the things now for Everest, we noticed the girl behind. She cannot really move. I mean, she's mm -hmm. she's there. Yeah. She cannot be involved. She's a total spectator. But as soon as they clear off a, a rock, then she can go back in for Everest. And there you can see the other side, the other end. They're so taking their time. Yeah. Looks like Lodi placed their first rock in the top 12. Mm -hmm. And Everest is attempting to go around it. Well, a little tight. Yeah, a little bit tight. Now, this is a good place to talk about, you know, the concentric circles. Now, the yellow is closer to the T or the button, so that that's a count right there. Mm hmm um, the red is close. Yes. I did not see if it's on the rings or not, but I think it is. Yeah. And that's going to happen a lot. Yeah. Okay. There's the skip. Looks like she's calling around the yellow. Mm hmm the DC Everest foursome or rink is the Caitlin Smith rink. She's the skip. Stacy Prisabulski is third Kristen gear is second and her lead their lead the evergreen lead is Allison Freitag and looks like that didn't make it over the hog line so it has to be pulled mm -hmm. yeah it has to get across the the hog line to be in play and they have to release the rock before the hog mm -hmm. line which is 21 feet out on the other end so they're well underway here for a big tournament with 32 teams, 16 boys, 16 girls, two-day event. We will try to cover six of these matches in the next two days, starting with this one. This is the initial. Okay, Everest is, uh, she's looking down at the skip to see what they would like her to do. It's a little heavy, so it looks like it's going to go right through. Yeah, a little too much on that one. Okay. Looks like she's calling around again. It seems like it's a little bit of a battle to the forefoot right now. Well, one of the things that in curling you always have to do is you have to play to the ice, and mm -hmm. they have to find that out, don't they? Yeah, especially those first few ends, the ice can change really quickly. Um, it's understandable that it takes a little bit to settle into it. Well, she's definitely wants it in a certain place because she's holding the room right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Lodi now, and they're heavy on the sweeping. Describe a little bit of why they do that. So the sweeping ultimately helps wear down the pebble that's on the ice, which is what makes the rock curl the way it curls. And with wearing that down, it can do a few things. Mainly, it can speed it up and make it go a few feet further. 
but um, depending on what direction you're sweeping with the angle of the rock, you can straighten it out or you can make it curl more too as well. Okay. Th now it looks to me on this one now that Everest just wants to put, put one in there somewhere. Yeah, I think she's just calling right to the center to try and beat the other team to the forefoot. They're on, they're about, they're not even halfway through the rock, so they still, they have hammers, so they still have a lot of rocks left to um, get to that scoring position. Kristen Gear, Allison Freitag, trying to get it in there. <laughs> well, they get it in the count. That might be sitting, that is Closer. counting mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. low dies. So right now they have one count. Looks like Lodi wants to take that out. You know, downstairs, we, we're up here. We don't hear the noise <laughs> like you would normally would downstairs, but it's there. Big crowds today for oh, this yeah. early yeah. game even. Yeah. Looks like that. It certainly looks might, heavy enough. Yeah, that might be going out of bounds over there on those it sides. Is. Out of play. Yeah. It has to be close or before the the line that goes through the middle. Forgot the name of it. <laughs> the be, center line? Yeah, the center line. There you go. <laughs> In order to be in play, I mean, it's got to be something that, if it's beyond that center line and beyond the the 12 foot circle, yeah, it's just taken away. Let's cross that. Looks line. like that one might be. Just enough. Okay. Now, Everest is in a really good position right now because they have the last shot of the end and they're sitting two. Mm -hmm. And their ultimate goal this end should be to get to. So they're sitting really well with the house split. Yeah, that, that hammer or the last uh, rock or stone, whatever you want that granite piece to be called, uh, really is so important. Mm -hmm. Of course, Lodi. And Everest, this is N2, and it's one nothing. so. Looks like she got a nice little hit and roll right behind oh, that, that card. Was nice that was shot. a really nice shot. Very nice, very nice. Now they have the count. That's a really good position for them to be without hammer. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough to get, it's tough to get back to that center that center one if it's guarded. Well, let's see what they can do here. Well, we're down to the the skips now. With the with, with the release. Well, they've communicated. Looks like she's calling a raise hit, a run back. Mm -hmm. This is one of curling's tougher shots. <coughs> the skip determines the sweep. For the most part, yeah, yeah. the skip is the one that calls line. Mm -hmm. Ooh, just a little too thin on that. Well, that's... That's... So now yellow is sitting two. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's calling a guard for that. You can see in the background, the, the facility behind the, the glass are bleachers and folks sitting and standing and it's crowded down there. Yeah, this is probably one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they're, they've been called off on the sweep and they just 
They're gonna let it go. Looks like she's going to a plan B here. Maybe try and bury it behind that center one. Well, they've got, I think, two. Mm hmm. Well, they have a um, short guard out there, too, so. They have some coverage with yeah. that yellow, for sure. Looks like Evers was calling some sort of run back or a double. Well, they've got the weight. And, oh, that might work in their favor. They at least still have some shots set up here for yeah. the Skibs last stones. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity right now for them. Because mm -hmm. that last that last rock accomplished something for them. Sometimes when you have hammer, the best thing to do really is just to open up that center to give yourself, to give that your skip as many shots as possible. Mm -hmm. When we look at the, the monitor, the screen here, you know, they've got cameras up above all the way through this this facility something else mm -hmm. i mean it's for curling it not not just the players but the spectators too i mean it, it there you can see the scoreboard one nothing or one null or whatever country you're in depending <laughs> on that Well, let's see what Lodi comes up with here. Looks heavy. Just a tad too much on that one. Yeah, yeah. All over the play. Now we're getting down toward the end of this one. After their discussion now, the skip comes to, to her last stone. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's calling right down to that yellow that's sitting on there on the forefoot. Mm -hmm. That release, similar to a handshake, I mean, there is a technique that you have to learn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you can improve in it with experience. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I've noticed in these high school state tournaments over the years, uh, Amelia, is that experience counts. Oh, yeah. You know, some of these teams, uh, if you look at the year in school they are, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know most of them have done it from ninth grade on or many, many years earlier, uh, it does make a difference. Yeah, for sure. I know a lot of really great curlers rework their release like every couple of years because science changes and they get new research out on mm -hmm. what works what doesn't work um depends on what type of ice you're on so um wasa has very unique ice too so some releases work better some releases don't so it definitely takes a lot of years of experience to learn that technique and how to use it correctly okay What's the difference between a, a circular spin on the rock going mm -hmm. one way or the other? So depending on if you do what's referred to as an out turn or in, an in turn, right. um, it can make the rock curve in a different way on the ice. So many people go from, um, many people go from like a straight angle to that handshake motion. And um, depending on which way you turn the rock um, and get it spinning, it will start curling in that direction that you spin it in. Okay. All right, now we've got a, a busy place, but 
not a lot of guards. Mm -mm. So this, we could come out of here with some points. Yeah, it looks like Everest is set up for a pretty good scoring end if they can get that yellow out. And that has changed now with the last, what say, four rocks? Oh, yeah. You know, who's kind of in charge or who, you know, it, it goes down to the last rock regardless. It really does. Oh, oh. Well, <laughs> okay. We're still sitting at one. Yeah, it looks like. Looks like Lodi scored one this end. Yep. Yeah. So did the score is two to zero going into the third end. Okay, now they just take care of everything out there. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to talk about in terms of the tournament itself. Um, this goes down to we have a boy side and a girl side in the competition, 16 teams each. There are an A, B, C, and D rank of four, all right, and by tomorrow afternoon, well, or tomorrow morning, I should say, they're going to um, change the process, and then they have a semifinal Saturday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, and the championship is at 4.30. Mm -hmm. And so, because you have eight ranks out here, their tournament is complete in terms of the draw they have a draw for their placement mm -hmm. you know so the teams know before the tournament takes place who they're going to compete with what their group of four is and this happens Lodi and Everest this happened because of the draw to be in that first competition and then I think don't they have a coin toss for their very first one um, I'm not sure what they did this year, but I'm sure that they have a coin toss for who has hammer on yeah, that first right. game. The first, yes. Yeah, the first game, yeah. Okay, so here we go. And three. Looks like Lodi put that first rock right in. Yeah, that's in a good spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to start. So this is for Everest now. This is Allison Freitag. She's a sophomore on this foursome. Allison with a release. Oh, oh. It's legal. She, she stumbled, but was able to collect herself. I'm sure it'll affect the stone somehow. Yeah, looks like they called right down to that yellow little heavy. Lodi has it in a pretty good position to force the other team to one. Right. Which is a good strategy to um, rega regain hammer in going into another end. And it looks like they're guarding it. Yeah, they had a steal on the last one, right? Mm -hmm. They. I'm not sure who started with hammer, but yeah. Okay. It's interesting to watch the strategy because it changes and different teams have different ways of approaching it. Mm -hmm. One thing that I really like about curling, you don't see fans in the, on the ice. Mm -hmm. The coach, there are two timeouts, mm -hmm. one called by the players, one by the coach. So that foursome on the ice really is in charge. You know, they, they make so many decisions, and and they live or die with them. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, and, and that's so cool. Yeah, curling is one of those sports where it's really individual as much as it's a team exactly. sport. Um, that skip, she's out there with really little to no help from especially coaches, which you get in many other sports. Right. And you don't have the parent <laughs> <No>. <laughs> aspect of it. Not until after. <laughs> well, yes. But in my experience... Probably in coaching, the parents are the most, or one of the most, understanding. Most of them are curlers. Mm -hmm. So they know, you know, yeah. things curling, happen. Curling definitely is usually a generational sport, mm -hmm. which is a great thing about it. 
I don't know if that was the intention, but... That looked pretty close. I think she was trying to go to back down on yeah. that yellow. Yeah. It's kind of in a nice spot right behind the T line for her to sit on it and basically ensure herself a point. But it looks like she just opened up the front a little, which is almost just as good for their team. Yeah. Okay, here we set now. And this third end. I want to get the girls' names connected here, but it takes a little time <laughs> to put that together. This is the sixth rock for Lodi, so it would be Lexi Bichler. If you look at the bottom monitor, you can see how many rocks have been. Yeah, I think that was only Lodi's third rock. That's, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So now Lodi comes in right to left. Everest goes left to right. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's unique. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's definitely many ways to make a shot. Okay. Looks like they're still trying to come down on that yellow. Just a little too outside this time. Yeah. Oh, that was close, but yeah. They're making the adjustments, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is Lodi's fourth rock, right? Yes. And right now, you see a lot of yellow. Yeah, Lodi is sitting nice with two sitting count. The West coach, Jim Wendland, handles this whole tournament. I mean, it, mm -hmm. he and he does a phenomenal job. This is a state tournament. Now, curling is not connected to the WIAA. Mm -hmm. It's more under the auspices of the State Curling Association, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit different in, in some respects, too, for the students. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> they've had four rocks, and they're all in, in the picture, and... I don't see anything red. Yeah, the um, Everest only has that one hanging out there in the yeah, corner. Yeah. But we'll see. This could change in a hurry. Yeah, it looks like she's calling a takeout here. Mm -hmm. Try and move some granite out of the way. Yeah, this is Stacy Przbilski. Uh, she's the senior for Everest. Mm. Looks well. like they almost got one out. Uh, yeah, I think right now Lodi's lying too. Score two. Mm -hmm. Now, here, the strategy for Lodi looks they want to spread things out. Yeah. It looks like um, Lodi is just really trying to get as many in there as they can to um, reduce Everest's chance of scoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks... <laughs> Come up with a guard instead. I think that's what she called. I just think it overcurled a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, she probably called it for a different spot. But... Mm-hmm. If you look at it, you know. Looks like Everest is going for another hit. Well, Everest is in a situation here now that they, they have to make something happen. Second rock for Stacy, for Zbilski. Certainly heavy enough. Let's see what it does. Well. Okay, now down to one. 
Yeah. That's got Everest sitting in a much better position. Oh, that was a nice shot. It sure does. And there are no guards out in front now, so this is pretty much open play here. Mm -hmm. Now, what is she asking for? The skip is really intently watching this one now because this is a key rock. And you can see some of the curl as it reaches the circle or the house. Yeah, it looks like they're just stacking them right there. Mm -hmm. That makes it definitely tougher for Everest to get out. I think she accomplished what she wanted to on that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Evergreens. A hard swip across the hog line. Definitely in play. Oh, looks like it did take two rocks out. Wow one of their own but it looks like they're still sitting so that was not yeah. a bad shot at all no not at all and they still have the hammer right yes so that changes the story right there and everest is trailing two nothing so you know they could be right back in this thing in this third end already mm-hmm You know, they, in so many sports, they talk about who's ahead and who's behind and how many times, especially basketball is one again, and football are, you know, those typical sports. You know, they're going back and forth. In, mm -hmm. in curling, it's back and forth every end almost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a totally different way of looking at things. Curling games definitely are probably one of the closer games of all the sports just because of the nature of each end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll credit the Scots for some of that. <laughs> How many years ago? <laughs> oh, looks like hmm. they well, are going to leave Everest sitting two here, right? which is a very good situation for Everest. That was a tough shot from Lodi as Everest was sitting on top of their own rock. So there was some risk to that shot for sure. The Wisconsin State High School girls champions of the history goes back to the very first meet in state meet in well the records. It goes beyond that. Mm -hmm. I know that because I had classmates in <laughs> state tournaments in high school and I didn't graduate in the 70s. Um, but the record that we have here goes back to 1976, and Medford was the first champion. Since that time, the two schools, Poinette and Portage, have been dominant in the girls' competition. Mm -hmm. Different in the boys. One of my brothers actually was a curling coach at Wausau East, or senior high at that mm -hmm. time that won the state championship. I don't think my brother knew much about it, but <laughs> he, he, he had good curlers. Okay, we're getting down to the final stages here. Evers put up a nice guard there. Yeah, they did. Yeah, one more rock each. They really don't have much of a time limit, do they, on some of this? Uh, um, the, the the game itself or match itself maybe has something, but yeah, usually to keep um, these kind of bond spiels on track, they have a time limit. But because of it's it's a state competition, I'm not entirely sure if they have a time limit. Yeah, I've never in this particular game. Yeah, I've never alluded to it, but I think too that that's part of the sportsmanship thing of. 
you know, let's not overdo it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen any timeouts on this one yet. No. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Usually teams try and save those timeouts for the last few ends when the houses get real messy. Exactly. Oh, they missed. Missed by a hair. So now, with the hammer, Everest has two. Um, Everest is sitting, I think, yeah, it looks like they're sitting two. I can't really tell with those outside rocks. It's kind of tough from this angle. Boy, that is. That but it is, does look like they're I'd, sitting two. I'd call it two, but they may, they may end up. But now the skips have to agree on, right? Um, the, th the vices and the thirds. Oh, the um, thirds. Okay. Typically call the score, and okay. if they are really that close, as it looks on the camera, they'll probably call for a measure. Yeah. Which they have a special device for. Mm -hmm. So looks like she's throwing in for three right now, which would put Everest ahead. Yep. Now you can see the the Lodi skip actually third I think right now standing behind just watching that's mm -hmm. all they can do they've got to work hard to get this one down there well they're doing now if you want to see something happen this is exactly it there was a time well now well, they got their three. Yeah. I Looks think, like they got I would three. Say. Thirds are going to take a look at it. Now the vices are looking at it, right? Mm hmm Well, they they can call a draw. I mean, uh, they are, I think. Nope. 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 I guess we'll see what she puts up on the scoreboard. De decision made, yeah. I Everest has at least two. Well, they're gonna put up a three. Looks like Everest is ahead with three. Yeah. That was a really nice. That was a really nice end. Yeah. You know, you again, in curling too. You you look at the first two ends as we watch them. Mm -hmm. Everest struggle. Mm -hmm. And in this one, all of a sudden they're ahead. Yeah, it really does take those first few ends to just figure out the ice, and sometimes one team gets it faster than the other team. But um, curling ice continues to change almost every end. So it's really who can maintain that constant reading of the ice. And obviously Everest had some great reading that, that mm -hmm. end. So now the hammer goes to Lodi. So Everest has the first rock. They are in red and they are ahead. 3-2 after three ends. This is an eight end mm -hmm. event, eight ends. Eh, it takes an hour and a half, maybe an hour and three quarters for some. You, you, like any other sport, you, you love to see it competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't want to do six games in two days and not get them to the end as much as we can. It may happen and it happens, but mm -hmm. okay. Looks like Evers put one right in there to start. And Lodi's going to go right around it. Mm -hmm. For Lodi now, Maddie Berry, sophomore. Lodi has three sophomores and a senior in their rank. Everest has two seniors, a junior, and a sophomore. So they're more experienced. Mm -hmm. Overall an older team for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of the teams, uh, and they can, they can submit uh, an alternate, mm -hmm. a fifth girl to, to play. Yeah, and those alternates are just as important as anybody else. Yeah. Well... Looks like they ended up putting up a guard, which isn't the worst case scenario as they have hammer. Yeah, and that's, I think, Amelia, that's a good point. Mm 
Mm -hmm. A lot of this strategy goes back to the hammer. It does. It really does. Aspect of it. With the hammer, you really either want to blank the end or get two. Mm -hmm. um, especially this early in the game. Everest release. Allison Freitag. Coming up a little short. But puts another one in front of their counting rock. All right. Lodi skip. Paige Sweet, the senior. She's the lone senior as the skip. Adjusting. <laughs> as long as you're above that um, T line, you right. can adjust all you need. Yeah. Clockwise rotation. Mm -hmm. And they don't need the sweep here because it's pretty heavy. And once it passes that T line, the other team skip can sweep it all the way out. Right. Yeah, they they have a, a part of each other's rock. For sure. Which is nice. You know, they have they have a a decision to make too. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we're we're to seconds now. So this is Kristen Gear. She's their junior on their Evers team. That could. Looks like it's slipping past that forefoot a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Evers is sitting three right now, which is putting them in a real good position without hammer. For Lodi, Sasha Rudsky. Rudnitsky. I'm going to try my best on that. <laughs> Poinette, Partyville, Lodi, Curling Communities, forever and ever. Heavy. Oh, looks like she uh, got that. She might stick around. No. Oh, it spun well, back around. Back. Might be biting. And like, uh, that, <laughs> that, I don't know. I'm glad I'm not making that decision. They always tell you to stay on them, try and spin them back on the house. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because it does happen, and sometimes that's the winning well, That was close. Rock. You could see it. I mean, that, yeah. it's proof that that can happen. That at least cleared some stuff out of the center. Sure. For Lodi. Yep. Okay, Kristen's second rock. Everest is really setting things up here. Everest is really getting that weight control really well for draws. Yeah, they draws. are. I mean, they, they, when you can see what they have out of four rocks and where they're sitting, they've got it figured out. And really in um, the high school game, that is really what, what it comes down to is um, getting those rocks in play in the places you need them to be um, and getting that draw weight down in those early ends. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that Everest uses this rank for practice is that going to be a factor here you think or not 
I would say that that is they definitely have a home field advantage. Um, Wasa tends to have a little bit more unique ice compared to other clubs, and really, ice is unique to every club. It really depends yeah. on their ice makers. Yeah. So they definitely probably have a better idea of how the ice runs, how fast it runs, how much it curls, and how it changes throughout a game. So they're probably using some of that knowledge now to get that draw weight good. Well, we're halfway through. The 16 rocks that are part of an end. So this is Stacy Przybalski. The rink name, Smith Rink, is named after the skip, Caitlin, who is the skip right now. Now this time they... Looks like they were trying to throw up a guard there, um, get them some coverage. Well, when you look at this one and... It, it almost looks like they're, in order for Lodi to do something, they're going to have to do some curl somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think Lodi here is calling a peel to try and get that, open up that center. Instead of, uh, Instead of drawing around. Uh, yeah, right. The draw's a little bit more risky now with how many rocks. Well, that, yeah. That... They ended up peeling their own, but that doesn't necessarily mean... It's a bad thing. They at least got something out of the way, so they right. still have a shot. Yeah. Well, you look at this, Amelia. Mm -hmm. Four red rocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All Everest. But that doesn't mean much yet. No, not at all. That's one of the nice things about curling. I mean, things can change. One rock can make such a big, big difference. And. Well, anyone who skipped knows that if you play good cleanup crew, it can change the course of a game. This is Stacy's second rock. Another nice guard to cover up the other side. Mm hmm. Describe the shoe situation for us. So curling shoes, um, if you have like shoes made for curling, they typically have Teflon on one shoe and just a grip on the other shoe so that you can slide out um, out of the like hack mm -hmm. um, to release the rock. And in order to sweep with those shoes on, you have a gripper that you put over your Teflon when you're not sliding out. And then if you don't have a pair of um, curling shoes, you'll do the opposite. You'll put the Teflon on a normal pair of shoes to be able to slide out of the hack. Yeah, Lodi's definitely struggling on this one. I mean, they have, they, you know, they still have that opportunity and they may have it at the end too, mm -hmm. to just put one in the middle, mm -hmm. just put it in the button takes care of you know all the others and I think this is a tougher strategical position for Lodi to be in um, with Everest's rocks right all clumped at the top and mm -hmm. well guarded it kind of makes them decide whether or not they want to go for the hits on those rocks or they want to go for a little bit more riskier with the draw um, because that draw weight has been difficult for some of the players to find and, and we go back to the hammer again. That's the key. It is, yeah. That well, was a pretty nice shot by yeah, Everest. Yeah, it is. Boy, they have it spread out now. And it looks like Lodi is just going to try and put one right on the button. Yeah, because look look at how much that would undo. Yeah. You know? Even if they could just get one in the 8-foot, 
that yeah. would also right. help them a yeah. ton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've got two chances. Paige Sweet. She's the senior, so, you know, mm -hmm. she, she's the leader. Like it might be running pretty good based on their sweep calls. Well, it's heavy enough, yeah. Maybe a little too heavy. It's too heavy. But they might be able to sit back on that red. Which Oh, okay. That is completely okay for their team right now. Yeah. Now Everest is only sitting one. And that's Yeah. That that's definitely puts them in a better position. No kidding. A perfect example <laughs> right there of don't get too excited. Yeah. <laughs> if you're ever parent. <laughs> you're really never out of an end no, until, I know. until just, the end's over. Yeah. Okay, Everest last rock. Caitlin Smith there, skip. And curl, nice release. Critical rock for Everest right here. Yeah, it looks like it's coming nice. Yeah, it is. Might be a little light. Well, but looks like they're gonna come in to maybe sit two. Well, probably just one. Now, <laughs> what do you do if you're, you're Lodi right now? You've, you've got a one point. Looks like all they can get is one here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think they kind of just kind of have to take that and go with it for the next end. Yeah, otherwise they're playing a little dangerously. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's definitely the option to give Everest one with the thought that you get hammer back and you can score two the next end to tie it up going into the sixth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they're opting for a little bit safer route. Well, they're early yet in the, in the match. So, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's like they're definitely, you know, in competition here. Yeah. Looks like they... Oh. No, that was a mistake. That was, Yeah, that was um, a little tight. So it looks like Everest has two. Two. Yeah, that, that... That's not what they wanted to do. Not what they wanted to do. And that happens in the game of curling as well. Yeah, it just... You know, the, the, the shot was... Not the the weight wasn't the issue, the direction. So now Everest little little room to move and move on to the next end. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Everest definitely has some cushion room on mm -hmm, their mm -hmm. scoring yeah. as you're looking at this now you can see the girls you know they've got a place they can get a, a drink or they can mm -hmm. uh, you know they've got a place to put their rocks they know what to, to do um, they go from one end to the next and I, I think probably under a minute <laughs> you know yeah and here we go in th five. And Lodi has the hammer yet because they gave up a couple of points. They really had one, but they gave him another one and then with that last rock. And like, like you said, Emily, it happens. Let's see if Elvis can come back here a little bit. 
Empress is trying to get that in. A guard is not bad here either for Everest. Um, Load, I can't mm -hmm. touch that guard since it's in the free guard zone and it's the first right. five rocks. Right. Well, it sits there. Looks like Lodi is going to try and use it to their advantage, try and generate some points here. <laughs> Everest girls are having a little chat as they come back. <laughs> uh, you know, just talking about what's going on, what they did. Yeah, a big part of curling is the communication on the ice, um, communicating ice conditions, where it's going to land, what the skip says. Uh -huh. um, that can, That's what really can make or break a game is the team's communication. Well, I would think, you know, if you're you're part of a rank, four, well, five girls, let's, let's say, mm -hmm. and you're doing, I mean, in your situation with juniors, I mean, you're playing with different athletes at different times mm -hmm. and different places, right? But like a high school situation like a Lodi right now or Everest, I mean, they've got to get along. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. These girls definitely spend a lot of time together. Yeah. Um, which can definitely help a team with dynamics and keeping that communication clear and really knowing what they need from each other on the ice. So in a way, um, they probably curl every day or at least four times a week. Mm -hmm. Um, they're probably one of, they're probably tighter than a lot of the teams that don't curl together every day. Well, this is the second rock here now. For Allison, Westack. And you can see the the two girls are looking at the skip the whole time down, and it looks like it's got plenty of weight. That's not a bad shot at all. No. That take them right behind their going guard, and that yellow's wide open. Mm-hmm. Looks like Lodi's opting to split the house. Try and get two points in there. They're working. See where the skip pulled them off the sweep. Mm hmm Definitely want to avoid hitting that red end. Yeah, that, <laughs> don't want to raise that one. In. <laughs> now, here, here's another example. The skip of the two teams are enjoying each other. Oh yeah. You know, it, it's it's a game. Okay? Yeah. It's a game. And they've probably played each other so many times this year. Yeah. Um, you definitely get to be friends with your opponents, which is a unique aspect of curling. Well, I did some high school coaching at Wausau West for a number of years. And one of my favorites was uh, cross country, you know, track. Mm -hmm. Because in, in all honesty, these girls, they're more than one. They were in competition in high school. They ended up rooming mm -hmm. together in college. I mean, mm -hmm. you you have so many things in common in a given sport, and you spend so much time during a season with them in competing, and then the parents get to know each other, <laughs> and then, I mean, that's that happens. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of team sports. For sure, yeah. And yet, track and cross country are not necessarily team sports, but just they are when it comes to the whole picture. Mm -hmm. They certainly are. Looks like Everest sunk a really nice one mm -hmm. behind the guards, and Lodi is going to try and freeze on it to try and set up a shot. Well, they letting it go. It's as heavy as can be, but let's see what happens. Ooh. Oh. Nope. If you look at and you keep statistics on this. 
if you look at how many times Lodi has gone through the circle, concentric mm -hmm. circle, compared to Everest, it's more than double where they're too heavy. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where, like, Everest's home field advantage really comes in. Um, and the new, unique thing about curling in general, too, is Lodi may be struggling a little this game, but they could come back and shoot 100% two hours later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or even the next end. It's a well, nice card. Yeah, they're setting things up. We're almost halfway through this end. That's a good view. I mean, that really adds a lot to mm -hmm. just having those cameras up there and and the folks down in the in the bleachers and on the floor can see it too. It's visible to everybody. That's heavy. It's like it's gonna take off their guard. Which good plan B on their part? Put up a guard for their um one in the eight foot over there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and th those two rocks are separate from everything else, so that forces Everest to make a decision. Mm-hmm. You know, which, which direction you want to go in terms of takeouts or guards or whatever. Well, they're just strolling down the ice. They cannot touch the rocks with their brooms. That's a no-no. Mm -mm. Looks oh. like Lodi still calling right down to it. Okay, this is the first rock now for Lexia Bickler. Coming up a little light. Yep. Just probably definitely their pro side on that shot. They have so they can at least use it in the coming rocks. Yeah, on this end now they, things are spreading out, but we have a little more it's a little busier out on top. Yeah, for sure. Than we've had in some of the ends so far. Everest is definitely trying to solidify their steel this end yeah. with um, how many rocks they put up top. A nice little tap off there to cover up that yellow, which is a nice shot as well. Yeah, they still have one, one count for Everest. And they're up 5 2 mm -hmm. in N5. So every N now, if they can even just draw, they're in great shape. And coming from behind three when you're in number seven and or eight is a lot different than right now. Mm -hmm. So they want to just add on if they can, it's far from over. Well, that one's not going to stay, so. They might have opened themselves up a little path there for Lodi's last rock. Mm -hmm. The port is at least a little bit wider. Okay, now we have the skips involved.
So, Caitlin Smith talks it over with the vice, Stacy Pizbilski. Decision made. So she'll slip down the ice and throw her first rock. <laughs> the one girl forever, she likes to have her water. <laughs> she, she goes back there every chance she gets, which is great. I mean, well, out know. on the ice, you'd. I know a lot of people don't consider curling that rigorous of a sport, but the sweeping well, takes a lot out sweeping, of you. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it really would. It, you know, what's the temperature? About forty. Um, typically, yeah, maybe a little colder out there. Yeah, about forty degrees, so it's not cold for them, really. I mean, no, they're busy. I mean, a lot of curlers curl in short sleeves, and I think she even had her jacket off for a while too. Yeah, yeah. That's the sign of a good sweeper, though. Mm -hmm. Well, she's taking it seriously. Exactly. She's prepared. I mean, you know, yeah. That was a really nice shot by Everest. Wow. That's really nice. Okay. Well, Lodi has two rocks left, so here we go. A busy, busy top end. Mm-hmm. Looks like she's going to try and clear some of that out. Okay. Now, it looked like she looked back at her coach. But Maybe it was her mother. <laughs> okay, her dad. <laughs> who knows? <Or> somebody. <laughs> yeah, who knows, exactly. And that's the neat part about it. And I know a lot of curlers who just use the glass as a mirror to fix it, their hair. Well, that would be my next question if you're going to bring up hair. Is it a prerequisite to have a ponytail? Um, Actually, yeah, it's really highly encouraged because girls' hair... Um, drops on the ice exactly and it can often like change the course of the rock so yeah, yeah i'm not sure if their team has a rule but i remember when i curl it's typically a rule that the girls curl with their hair back sure that's why i brought it up mm -hmm. because that that's not the first time i noticed that. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it makes sense and that's not the only sport where they encourage that yeah well obviously there's some other reasons in other sports well too, but... yeah but you know what the heck? <laughs> okay, this is serious stuff here now. Last rock for Everest, and they're up 5-2. Sitting, I think, 3. Yeah. So, I don't want to talk about it yet, but where do you just call it and say it's done? What's the difference in well, points or... Um, there's not technically a rule of when you need to call it, yeah. but um, typically if you're mathematically eliminated, yeah. you shake out of respect for, you, right. for the other team. Right. Um, but otherwise, it's up to the team's discretion. A lot of teams have rules, like if they're down three going into the last end, they'll still play, but if they're down four, they'll shake. Sure. Um, typically, if you're down more than like five or six going into the last couple ends... Um, you'll shake. That's kind of just a tougher position to be in just because your the morale is down already. Um, and it's still early in the week, so they have a lot more games to play, save some energy. Right. Well, here's the hammer. See what happens now. They, you know, they, if they don't do something, Everest will be up by uh, half a dozen. And she does have some options, and that's why they're talking it over. Well, it looks like, what, Everest has two there? Yeah, Am I seeing looks that like right? Everest is sitting only two. Two, yeah. Red on red. A little harder to see.
the complexion of this whole thing could change right now. Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing she doesn't want to do is come up light. Not give herself a chance. She's going to give herself a chance here. Looks like she might have something. Oh. No. Looks like Everest is still sitting those two. Two, two yeah. So we've gone through five ends after trailing two nothing after the first two ends you can see the board now mm -hmm. they are up seven two with three ends to go mm -hmm. so this is the opening game of the state girls curling championship here at the uh, Wausau Curling Club site, one of the better clubs in North America, and this opened and it became the site for the state championship for high school, and I think it's going to be here for a long time. Yeah, it's definitely one of the curling clubs with the better um, viewing opportunities for fans as well. Yeah, yeah. That's a fantastic facility. One of the things, and, I, and I've talked to friends about this, you know, ahead of time coming in here, and I've done a few of these, is after the, after the meet or match or game or whatever, we have in this facility a large cafe mm -hmm. with, a, with a cafe style. And you go through and you grab, you know. And then there are times when these two teams will sit down together. Oh, yeah. And just, you know, kind of get acquainted with each other and, mm -hmm. and have some fun. And it takes about 10 minutes and they forget who won or lost. Yeah. You know, it's it's so healthy that way. You know, it's a heck of a lot more than just a handshake after a game, you know. Just... For sure. In curling, socializing post-game is one of the more important parts of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, curling is definitely a sport of making friends and... Especially high school. These girls are all the same age. Yeah. And they have some things in common, not just curling in many respects, too. Of I course. mean, it could be a lot of other things, you know. Yep. Well, she's going to make sure it's smooth. Looks like that ice might be slowing down a little out there. Mm -hmm. Everest hogged their first rock. Okay, first rock, and six for Maddie Berry. Looking at our, our schedule as they try to get it across, <laughs> you talk about slowing things down, yeah, mm -hmm. it's happening, isn't it? Um, this is game one of, I think, six that we'll cover on Wausau Area Access Cable or Media. We'll have a boys game next. And we'll try to get three boys in and three girls. And sometimes it's very difficult because you want to have matchups that are competitive. Uh, you know, this is... On the internet, so it doesn't matter the teams, but I think when it comes to the fan support, the closer you are to Wausau, you want those teams for sure mm. in there somewhere. And that's, so that's part of our scheduling process. There have been some, prize, some surprises in, in recent years on how well certain teams have done. Mm -hmm. There is a, an element of unpredictability about all this. For sure. You know, and a lot of a, a lot of games. If you look at all the games and all the competition in the state tournament, and there are a lot of games. There are an inordinate number that come down to the last rock. Oh yeah. 
you know, it just for some reason that's kind of what happens. Different teams bring different levels of competitiveness every weekend, so it really comes down to it really comes down to who's out there and who's making their shots, and that can be different every day. Well, we've got a empty circle <laughs> after the first couple. Looks like they're trying to readjust to that ice change. Usually around the sixth end is when the ice starts to slow down again. Uh -huh. There might be a couple other games um, shaking early, which affects how the ice runs as well. Yeah, we have eight sheets here, and they're all busy. Uh, if you were downstairs in the bleachers or, you know, down there, uh, you could watch all eight. We have a monitor for the one we're covering. And so these girls are aware. They have skaters on both sides of them. And uh, it comes down to a focus. Mm -hmm. Just focus on your spot and what you're doing. Well, somebody's going to be in there. Looks like Everest got yeah. to the rings there. Yeah. They, it looks like they're wide open. And Lodi's going to try and hit and roll over under cover. Now, a professional lip reader would be able to tell you what she said. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Every team seems to have their own code of words as well, so <laughs> it makes it even more difficult. Yeah, they get busy. Well, that one had the weight. Mm-hmm. But it just didn't work. Looks like it just ticked off a little too much. Yeah, just a sliver. Puts Everest in a pretty good position here. Well, when it's 7 2, Amelia, you know, Lodo, I'd turn, they're going to have to turn this around mm -hmm. starting now, pretty much. Six then out of eight. And you know, some teams are known for being able to play better when they're down, uh -huh. and other teams lose it when they're up, um, lose their focus a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. Games like this could easily turn around with just a rock. Yeah, that's where leadership comes in, coaching mm -hmm. comes in, how you handle that. Sasha Radzinski. Soft, three sophomores for Lodi and one senior. Everest, and we mentioned this before, a couple of seniors, junior, and sophomore definitely have the experience over the Lodi girls, no doubt. And it's a lot of times it is a factor. Well, we're going to set up. This time they're in the circle. Yeah. The last time. <laughs> Not Looks much. like they're pretty well buried, too, Lodi is. Yep, yep. Um, that's a pretty good position to be in if you're going to try and generate two points. Off to that side, leave that center open for the skip's last shot. That's kind of a goal, isn't it? Yeah, especially when you have hammer, you want to keep things off the center line mm -hmm. um, in hopes that you'll be sitting one or two on those outsides and your skip can sink one in for two or three. Well, let's see if it has enough. Okay. 
Still one right now for Evers. You know, this is N6. We haven't seen a lot of them in the button, have we? No, and honestly, typically, um, the scoring in curling doesn't always happen around the button. Um, it can, but because of the strategy of trying to keep that center open for the last rock, mm -hmm. um, a lot of teams kind of stay away from throwing to that button and can make sure the other team doesn't throw to that button. That was a really nice shot by Lodi. Yes, it was. Good roll under some guards, and now they're sitting two. Mm -hmm. That was a nice shot. Well, the reason I bring that up is because people always talk about the button, the button, the button. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, that, you know, and like you said, yeah, that's part of the game. And yes, that's part of the scoring, especially. Mm -hmm. But to get there... I mean, the button is worth as many points as any other ring. Right. So. Right, exactly. It really just comes down to that um, strategy. It's not a bad shot. Nice little raise. Mm. This is starting to shape up to be a uh, very competitive end. Looks like Lodi is ready to get back in there. They're going to throw one to the wing in hopes mm -hmm. that they can score multiple. Looks well, like they raised Everest to sit right on them there. That, yeah. That complicates things. Mm hmm And six, seven, two. And we are scheduled for eight. The sheet of ice is 146 feet long, 15 feet 7 inches wide in the U.S. Now, I have to add U.S. because other countries might have it just a little bit different. The first Olympics began in 1928 in France as a demo sport, reintroduced in 1988 after almost 50 years. Hmm. In Japan, Nagano Japan Olympics. Okay, some trivia. It's like Everest is putting another one in there to put the pressure on Lodi. Boy, are they ever now. They are really now doing that. Okay, when you look at the gal lining up on the hack, the takeoff, mm -hmm. if you're right-handed, you're on the left side with your heel and opposite if you're left-handed. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a few left-hand, not many. Yeah, lefties are kind of a gem in the curling community. Uh -huh. They like to put them at third because the idea is that they can see a different angle of the house. Sure, sure. Everything's strategy, isn't it? Yep, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Everything it is. we talk about. And if you're lucky enough to have a lefty, you throw a certain strategy to try and make sure that she gets the shots that she needs. Yep. <laughs> Okay, we're down to the skips slash shots now. 
Looks like Everest is sitting two now. Right. Lodi kind of had an unfortunate outcome to a shot. Part of the problem for Lodi, even if they get a point or two here, they then they give up the hammer. Mm-hmm. For the, you know, for end eight. Uh, so, I mean, that's how it keeps it. I mean, it's good rule, I think, really. Mm -hmm. Alternate hammer based on previous end. You definitely want the hammer and the even ends. Uh-huh. Little heavy. Yeah, that that's... But they are still sitting good. Okay. Lodi's last shot here. Looks like she's going to try and set up a double to sit two. Riskier shot, but I think the reward outweighs the risk here. All right. Strategy set. The skip, the leader, last shot. Down 7-2, they could use a couple. That would change the complexion of this a lot. Mm -hmm. This one one rock could make a big difference in, you know, where we go from here. Looks like they're on it. It might be curling a little. It's crossing that center line. It's heavy enough, that's for sure. Mm. Oh, that's so it. Well, that's two. That is two for Everest? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that, that one didn't work. Um, nine to two. Two ends to go. I, w I would think they'd go at least one more. Um, again, it really depends on the team. Okay. It looks like well, they're, they're shaking. Not. They're not. They're shaking. Nine to two is a tough score to yeah, come back I, from. Yeah. So well, I understand. Well, I think, too, the biggest factor in this competition right here is experience. Mm-hmm. And, and also maybe a little bit of home ice, you know, yeah. for DC Everest. But... The interesting part of this, we sat down, and when we started our, our commentary of this competition, they were down to nothing, mm -hmm. and they never scored another point. Yeah. Um, it really, there's so many variables that comes into a game, so. This was a good example of that. Yeah, I mean, for all sure. All the way through, and, in, and, and a lot of them, the last rock determined the outcome of that end. It I did, mean, uh, yeah. Know, one way or the other. With Amelia Hintz, I'm George Hirsch. We hope you enjoyed our broadcast of the Wisconsin State High School Curling Championships Girls Division. And we'll have a few more yet this weekend coming our way. Until next time, take care.